Mr. Danielson will be filming us today. Uh, so thank you for being here, Bruce. Item 32 is a second reading, an ordinance of the City of Sioux Falls, South Dakota, amending the Code of Ordinances of the City by amending Chapter 92, Health and Sanitation, by adding a subchapter entitled Tobacco-Free Policy for All City Property. Jill, welcome. Great. Thank you. Thank you, City Council. Uh, I'm Jill Franken with the Sioux Falls Health Department. Hey, bud, you got a spud? No, fool, but I got a cool. Now, I'm a feller with a heart of gold with the ways of a gentleman, I've been told. The kind of a feller that wouldn't even harm a flea. But if me and a certain character met, the guy that invented the cigarette, I'd murder that son of a gun in the first degree. Now, it ain't cause that I don't smoke myself, and I don't reckon they hinder your health. I've smoked them all my life, and I ain't dead yet. But nicotine slaves are all the same at a petting party or a poker game. Everything's got to stop while they have that cigarette. Smoke, smoke, smoke that cigarette. Puff, 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 and if you smoke yourself to death. Tell St. Peter at the Golden Gate that you hates to make him wait, but you just gotta have another cigarette. Now in a game of chance the other night, old Dame Fortune was doing me right. The kings and the queens, they just kept on coming around. Then I got a full and I bet it high, but my bluff didn't work on a certain guy. He just kept on a raising and a laying the money down. Now he'd raise me and I'd raise him. I sweated blood, I got a sink or swim. He finally called and then didn't raise the bet. I said, ace is full, pal, how about you? And he said, well, I'll tell you in just a minute or two, but right now I just gotta have a cigarette. Smoke, smoke, smoke that cigarette. Puff, 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 and if you smoke yourself to death. Tell St. Peter at the Golden Gate that you hate to make him wait, but you just gotta have another cigarette. The other night I had a date with the cutest little girl in the 48 states, a hybrid uptown fancy little date. Now she said she loved me and it seemed to me that things were just about like they ought to be, so hand in hand we strolled down lover's lane. She was oh so far from a chunk of ice and our smooching party was a going real nice, so help me Hannah, I think I'd have been there yet. But I give her a kiss and a little squeeze and she said, well, Tex, excuse me please, but I just gotta have another cigarette. Smoke, smoke, smoke that cigarette. Puff, 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 and if you smoke yourself to death. Tell St. Peter at the Golden Gate that you hate to make him wait, but you just gotta have another cigarette. Hey, bud, you got a spud? No, fool, but I got a cool. Now, I'm a feller with a heart of gold with the ways of a By gentleman. By saying we hear you and to pass this public um, important public health policy. Thank you. First degree. Now, it ain't cause that I don't smoke myself. I don't reckon they hinder your health. I've smoked them all my life and I ain't dead yet. But nicotine slaves are all the same at a petting party or a poker game. Everything's got to stop while they have that cigarette. Good evening. My name is Steve Buckland. I'm from Sioux Falls. Einstein from Sioux Falls. Sir, could you just repeat your name again, please? Peter Hassenstein. Thank you, Peter. And I'm coming here to speak against this. Hi, good evening. Uh, my name is Dr. Jennifer Tingley. I'm the Chief Medical Officer for the City of Sioux Falls and Falls Community Health. Um, I could speak to you in my position as the Chief Medical Officer. I have a degree in medicine. I'm a family medicine physician. I have a degree in public health. Good evening, counselors. Uh, nice to see you. I'm, I'm Dr. Dave Kapaska. I'm a family physician and also the regional president at Avera McKennan Hospital here in Sioux Falls. Uh, uh, I'm Dr. Ben Solomon. I'm a medical oncologist at Avera. Um, Good evening, Mayor Huther, members of the council. My name is Paul Hansen. I'm the president of Sanford USD Medical Center here in Sioux Falls. Hi, my name is Dr. Amy Elliott. I'm a member of the American Cancer Society State Leadership Board. 
Tom Walsh, Great Life. Counselors, my name is Melissa Nesdahl. My name is Hannah, and thank you, Anna. Welcome. Hi, my name is Dylan Majors. Oh yeah, sure. Thank you. No, I'm, uh, my name is Thomas Vay, and I'm sorry I'm not dressed up to come and uh, address a council. But I just got off work. I just found out this afternoon that the second reading was coming up today. Um, I travel a lot for business, and you know I miss a lot of this, unfortunately. But um, in you know, do we have to have this on the screen throughout the whole thing? Okay. Thomas, you look great. I'm sorry. Go right ahead and Mayor. speak. You're um, going to be fine. You're going to be fine. You know, we, we have heard a lot of pulling on our heartstrings, kids with asthma, things like that, and I'm sorry. I'm sure you're great parents, and I'm sure those kids will probably never smoke because they have great parents. That's the idea. It starts at home. I didn't want my kids to smoke. Oh, and in full disclosure, I smoked for 28 years. And I've been tobacco-free now for nine. Put them down. You know, haven't picked one up since. And I'm glad that I did. Um, but I don't want you guys to make a decision based on heartstrings, based on emotion. We're talking about outside. And the, tonight was the first time I got to read the ordinance. The ordinance is a little shallow in my view because it gives you the opportunity to determine where you're going to put these signs up when you decide, like say Rib Fest. By the way, Rib Fest, everybody's smoking ribs. I'm not going to necessarily take my child with asthma to Rib Fest and be surrounded by 10 smokers going. If you do, then that's not good parenting and or maybe they're not allergic to the smoke, regardless. Is it at that time that you're going to say, well, it's being held on city property. We have to put a sign up there now and not allow any smoking in there. As far as the Premier Center goes, maybe you should designate an area farther away from the front door. There already is a state law, no smoking, you know, bars, restaurants, public places like that. This is a great city. And it's not full of rude people. And if someone sees this fine lady getting into a concert or something, if she were to ask somebody to not smoke in that might have been smoking close to her, I'd bet you they'd probably put it out and move because this is Sioux Falls. It's full of beautiful, great people. If Great Life wants to ban smoking on their golf course, let them. It's a private business. All the hospitals, no smoking. I know my wife works at one of them. No smoking on their campuses. They have the right to do that. But if I want to go walking in Yankton Trail Park some Sunday afternoon with no one around, with a friend of mine that maybe smokes cigarettes, it's not harming anybody at that particular time. Yet, if a police officer drove by, he could be, you know, hey, you got to leave the park. And what designation is there, because it's not in the ordinance, what is a city playground? I see you change that. What is, you know, uh, where city youth activities take place? It's kind of vague. And I think you should be a little more specific about that before you go ahead and vote yes on this. Um, so like I said, I'm not for people being harmed by smoking. And oh, by the way, there's over 200 diseases cancer included, that's caused by oxidative stress. Ask your doctors. There's over 100 universities around the world right now studying oxidative stress, two major pharmaceutical companies. It's your environment, the phone you use, the food you eat, all the cars we drive and the exhaust that come from them. Are we going to ban cars from going into public places? Some of them need more uh, you know, emissions tests than others. I just think that this is a road down more socialistic type government than it is about a health related issue. I would gladly move if I still smoked if kids came to play in a park 
and I was sitting next to a swing, I would gladly move. And I think most of the citizens of, the United States of Sioux Falls would as well. So I'm asking you to vote no on this and maybe, maybe lean towards more things like the Premier Center and other places where you might designate areas to smoke and or be a little more specific in the ordinance than just city property. Thank you. Have a great night. Thomas, thank you very much. Appreciate it. Welcome. Good evening, Mayor Hither and City Councilors. My name is Lori Hilmo, and I'm here tonight to give my opinion of the ordinance to ban smoking on all city property. Hello, my name is Taylor Promus, and I'm currently a senior at O'Gorman High School. George Hahn, Sioux Falls, lifelong resident. Terry Torkelson, General Manager, uh, Denny Sanford Premier Center and Orpheum Theater. Um, Good evening. Good to see you all again. Uh, Darren Smith, Washington Pavilion Management Incorporated. Good evening, Mayor Heather, Council Members. I'm Patty Abdella, and I'm representing the Sioux Falls Park and Recreation Board here tonight. Please come forward, sir. Uh, and, and if I can, uh, sir, we're certainly going to let you testify. You've done a great job. Uh, you have, and, and we don't have to be done. I'm, I'm not saying that. Um, for the most part, there has been non-duplicative comments made, and we, the council truly, truly appreciates that. Uh, we're nearing one hour of testimony. Uh, uh, very, very quickly, um, I, I don't think it's, I've got uh, a page and a half of reasons for and reasons against, and they have been, uh, I've tried not to duplicate those. I'm not going to read them. Uh, I don't think, I, I, I know the council has been paying attention. Um, but again, I'm going to encourage you uh, as we continue, uh, please Try not to duplicate what's already been stated, uh, whether you're for it or against it. Welcome, sir. Thank you. Good evening, Mr. Mayor and esteemed uh, city council members. My name is Frank Gernick. I'm the executive director for Dakota Alliance Soccer here in Sioux Falls. My name is Dave Meyer. I am the chair for the Sioux Falls Board of Health. The Sioux Falls Board of Health is composed of seven members appointed by the mayor, and it is our responsibility to exercise general supervision over the health of the city. Bruce Danielson, I wanted to change the subliminal message that uh, was just up on the screen because I don't think it's fair to this whole discussion. Should it be, have been either blank or it should have just been the building that we're sitting in. I think it's wrong to be uh, doing the marketing in this entire process when we have people here trying to talk about this issue. I agree with Thomas and George that were up here. I'm a fervent anti-smoker. I hate cigarettes. I hate tobacco. Uh, 49 years ago in 1967, my father gave me a birthday gift of quitting smoking. He never picked up another cigarette after that. I can't stand smoking or tobacco use. I especially hate the litter. We allow drinking of alcohol. It's legal. This is a nanny state intrusion into our privacy, into our public, and into the 20% the who are old enough to smoke. I really want you to just vote this down and get rid of the citizen abuse that is tied to this. You need to narrow down the objectives if, if you must vote on something, but this is too intrusive. The price of tobacco, you know, I, I went to a, a a gas station one day, and I hadn't helped anybody buy a pack of cigarettes or a carton of cigarettes in years. I just, I just won't do it. And I saw $56 for a carton of cigarettes. And I go, is that a joke? And they said, no, that's what they are. And the woman right behind me goes, yeah, and I'm trying to quit now. The price of cigarettes is going to do more than this ordinance will ever do to stopping smoking. I'm driving down the highway, and I can smell somebody smoking two or three blocks ahead of me. I just hate the smell of cigarettes that bad. I can even tell you certain brands of cigarettes because I have to work in offices where people would smoke certain ones, and that image, that, that nostril stink is still in my nose. I can't get rid of it. But this is wrong. I know that this is... I want people to quit smoking. I know all these good people that are sitting in here want people to quit smoking. But it's legal. If you're going to have a problem with cigarettes, 
tobacco use in this town, just go ahead and write a ban for all tobacco in town. Don't let anybody sell it. Don't let anybody do anything. But in the meantime, it's legal. Let this thing stand. Get on with what's really important in this town and quit being a nanny state. Thank you. And that really should, and this really should stay up there for the rest of this discussion to counter the other one that was up. And I don't know, what was <laughs> folks. Um, I just spoke with uh, Council Chair uh, Rolfing. Uh, I asked for his opinion in terms of, you know, are, are we starting to get. Um, a duplicative comments, and, and we are. Uh, again, I think you've done a tremendous job tonight, uh, giving great reasons for, giving great reasons against. Um, I, what I'm going to recommend is that we discontinue um, this dialogue. Uh, Council Chair, uh, I, I think you, you agree with that. Yes. Um, Councilors, if there's any other you know, thoughts, uh, but I'm looking around the room, it looks like you've got at least an idea of where you're at. Um, so with that in mind, I would like to discontinue it. Uh, Mr. Stenga, it looks like um, you're trying to prove a point. Yes, I am. Um, and, and First Amendment. As, as you often do, sir. Correct. Uh, so, Mr. Stenga, do you have a point that's, uh, yes, that's different from yes, the rest? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Okay, sir. You will be the last person who will give testimony on this, um, and I think that's more than adequate, more than fair. Um, Mr. Stenga. Tim Stenga. I'm not a smoker, never have been. But not a single person has really come up here to tell anybody how to take care of one underage smoking where kids start at 14 to 15 years old. I don't know why the city council hasn't come out and went up to pier and made it to 21 to get cigarettes. That's an easy one. But I guess the thing is, is uh, you're just holding everybody hostage. But when they say that it's going to save lives, what lives? We all know we're going to live and we're going to die. We just don't know when. Jeez, but I also believe that uh, people have a right to smoke. They have a right to do stuff. I, I would like to, at my house, put out no smoking signs down my sidewalk because I own my property. The city, own, we're going on city-owned property. I would like to go on my own property so I don't have to pick up cigarette, cigarette butts on my property when I don't smoke. I'd like to have no, no smoking on my property. But I can't have that. But I guess what I'm trying to say is is this going to deter people to smoke? No, because when I leave here tonight, I'm going to drive down the street. There's going to be a little kid in the back seat of a car, and mom and dad are going to have the cigarette going. Now, what is more against the law than having all the windows up and the child is sucking in that smoke from two people? I think this is a little bit too much. Uh, thank you, Mr. Stinga. Uh, counselors, I'm now going to put it in your hands. Uh, I think that's more inappropriate. Uh, again, folks, you've done a tremendous job tonight. Thank you for being uh, productive, respectful, um, and, and prepared. Appreciate that. Uh, counselors, any motions, any comments? Uh, Councilor Silber, sir. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Welcome. Um, first, I'd like to thank Directors Franken and Carney and all those involved who put so much time and energy into this, truly. And thanks to all those who have reached out and shared their views. Um, it's been a lot of them. And there's plenty of strong opinions on both sides. Tobacco use is a tough subject to defend. I'm not here to do that or argue with any of the points that have been made against it. Um, as I've shared over the past few weeks, I know firsthand what it's like to be around this 24-7 since I was old enough to crawl. I've seen its devastation. I've lost a parent. Quite frankly, I would just as soon never see another cigarette again in my lifetime. But after doing due diligence and studying all the data and arguments, I mean, I do support an outdoor ban in areas such as parks, libraries, where kids will frequently be in attendance. But the problem I have with a complete one-size-fits-all ban just keeps coming down to that question of how much government and regulation is too much. Um, I was leaving a show the other night, and I walked by a group of folks smoking in their designated area outside, and it hit me that in the last few years, 
We've legislated these folks out of buildings and businesses, and we've taxed their product to the point where it costs them roughly twice what it used to to keep up their habit. And while I applaud and supported both of those steps as deterrents, now it seems government's coming around again to tell these folks and citizens to essentially get off our property as well in some cases. And I mean, all our citizens have rights, even those who have a legal habit that we're not particularly fond of. So for me, giving my personal history and sincere hatred of smoking, it's a tough call and a fine line, but I keep coming to that same conclusion, this, that this total ban across the board, it's just, it seems to me government regulation a little bit on overload, and it's just too much in its current form, but thank you for letting me express that. Councilor, thank you. Councilor, does anybody else want to engage before we vote? In that, anybody? Last call, folks. I'll make a motion to approve. Been a motion to approve. I'll second. It has been seconded. Mr. Mayor, I have an uh, amendment. Councilor Erickson. Um, our our uh, assistant city clerk does have this in front of her, but I will read it uh, in for the record. Motion to amend by removing the words for all city property. In the introduction and title, in section one, remove the de definition of city property and insert the definition youth activities, activities in which the intended participants are those under 18 years of age. In section three, replace any city property with city-owned playgrounds and facilities where youth activities take place. In section four, replace city property with tobacco-free areas. Also in section four, remove the fifth and sixth sentences and insert any person in violation of this subchapter may be ejected from the city-owned playground or facilities where youth activities take place. Rex. Second. Oh, there's been a... Uh, <laughs> counselor, don't do that again. <laughs> uh, thank you. Uh, that has been... There's been a motion to amend, and it has been seconded. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Councilor Erickson. Thank you. If I, if I may, Mayor and City Council, I do want to take this time to thank all of those that have reached out to this council. Um, we have been receiving numerous emails from both proponents and opponents in regards to this very sensitive and emotional topic. It is not an easy, easy vote. As stated earlier, this policy was put in place in 2013 by the Parks Board. Simply what this amendment does is it puts that policy into ordinance and gives us a framework to expand upon. Let me be clear, this is not an amendment to squash this forever. This is framework for us to make incremental changes based on those properties that we as a legislative body see fit. We can take on the conversation with the help of the experts. With, no one's here to dispute that tobacco is healthy. We know that. We know tobacco is not healthy. This is simply to build upon those. We've heard a lot of support from um, those that manage our city properties. We trust those experts to regulate firearms. Why not tobacco? Why have a top-down approach to have them do what we say? Why not let them have a designated area in the back if they have people coming in that want that. I understand no safe level of tobacco. There is no safe level of tobacco. I understand that. But there are rights of all here in place. Many of the people that have been in front of us have said they support this, but their properties are not smoke-free at this time. I encourage a collaborative effort of us to address those items. Is it 25 feet from an entrance? Is it um, the event center doesn't allow re-entry. That's a whole nother conversation for another time with the re-entry as far as being dangerous or not dangerous. That would eliminate 80% of the smoking at those facilities right now. If I, I, I am not a smoker, I do not like smoking. Um, if I am in my car having a cigarette, yes, that impacts my health. That is my personal freedom, my personal choice. That it is not impacting anyone entering the building. I ask you to support this amendment, allow us to build on the framework, and continue this conversation as we move forward. Thank you. Councilor Mock. Thank you. I have to strongly disagree with Councilor Erickson. This is, this is an easy vote, a really easy vote. You know, and this amendment, this amendment doesn't do anything new. 
this is just putting to, it's the exact same thing that we have already. This isn't anything new. Vote no on this amendment. Let's be about being that positive, progressive city that we are, and let's think about the 85% of the people in this town who don't smoke. Let's think about those rights, and let's talk about how we're going to support the rights of the people that, that truly are here sharing their concerns. You know, of the numbers of people who have been here this evening and the numbers of people that have contacted each of us individually, the vast majority support this. This is one of those times when we need to listen to the people that elected us and the people that are here that are spending time really doing the research, really being involved in a topic. For us to just spit in their faces because we've decided it's a personal liberty thing, 85% of our community wants this to happen. Let's get back on a positive track in this community. I'm disappointed in the negativity that's happening here tonight. I really know that this is a progressive, growing community. This is one of those places that people want to move to. They want to be part of a community where it's healthy and it's active and it's progressive. And if we are going to continue to, to be small-minded and negative about things, this isn't going to be the place that people are going to want to come to. I think we're at a point where we need to continue this progressive, positive atmosphere about this community and voting yes on the original uh, ordinance is positive, progressive action for this community. <laughs> Vote no on, this, on the amendment. It doesn't do anything. Councilor Neisert. I wrote a statement today at about 3 o'clock. I've been spending a lot of time on this. I, first of all, I want to say sorry for not returning all of your calls. I'm looking at some of you. I, my phone has been ringing nonstop for two days, nonstop. And I've had, uh, my voicemail box has been full multiple times. It's, it's been overwhelming. When this was presented to me uh, for the first time 10 weeks ago, I was totally opposed. My initial concern was liberty and government overreach. But I do my homework, I try to gather the facts, and I try to test my own assumptions. In addition, the health department, including Director Franken, uh, Mary Michaels, and uh, Director Kearney have done an incredible job of answering questions and providing me information whenever I asked for it. Their effort was simply astounding, it really was. It's a model for how a department should assist and frankly lobby us. They took someone who was completely opposed initially and have me where I am tonight, incredibly torn, having agonized for days over this decision. Now I'll tell you, I've really agonized over this. My starting point was liberty, but as I studied the issue, it became clear it's not that simple. Liberty is one competing good, but there are others. Others include protecting others from harm, public health, setting an example for children, and sometimes even protecting people from themselves in certain limited cases. Liberty doesn't exist in a vacuum. It isn't unlimited. Even the most strident who think government should leave us alone believes there is a role for the state to restrict our liberty. The only question is why, under what circumstance, and how much. We can all agree that your choices and actions should not harm others. On that basis, we can find common ground on restrictions on tobacco products when it harms others. The issue, however, is finding agreement when harm occurs and when it is significant enough to warrant action. There's clear evidence that exposure to secondhand smoke indoors is an issue, I believe. What isn't clear is what amount of exposures outdoors really matters. For example, if someone is smoking 100 feet away from me outside, does it have any appreciable impact on my health? I don't know. But again, we can find agreement on restrictions based on the harm principle. That's low-hanging fruit and somewhere we can start. Restrictions on use near entrances, around children, and around organized activities could easily be justified on the harm principle. Besides harming others, we also sometimes pass laws based on legal paternalism, both soft and hard. And now I'm kind of getting into philosophy, but soft paternal paternalism is a reasoning that someone cannot make an informed decision on their own, so we'll make it for them. Laws prohibiting children from smoking is an example. These laws aren't terribly controversial either. We can find common ground on those things. But then we get to hard paternalism. That says that although you're an adult, you're educated about the dangers, you know better, you still do it nonetheless, we're going to tell you what's good for you. This is very controversial. Surprisingly, however, this reasoning to pass a law is not unheard of. Examples include seatbelt laws and helmet laws. We all know we should wear a seatbelt, but we still have laws against it. Tobacco laws in various forms are frankly various combinations of all three of these. Clearly smoking near a child is harmful, we all agree on that. Clearly a child should not be allowed to smoke, we all agree on that. 
An adult using chewing tobacco in the far corner of a city park, should that be banned? That's a tough one. And good people in this room have a major disagreement on that issue. It, becomes, it became clear to me that this issue is very complicated. Uh, there's a lot of competing goods and there's a number of justifications for tobacco laws. With a ban this comprehensive, all three are in play. And that makes this very controversial, very polarizing, and very difficult. I had a lot of other objections and my research has largely alleviated those. I'm convinced we're not criminalizing anyone. That's been covered. Uh, the thing about this amendment, it does seem a little weird to have a ordinance without a penalty. It feels like we're kind of legislating a suggestion, which is a little bizarre. Um, in the real world, people do comply with tobacco bans. We have proof from the parks policy. The school district has a ban. People comply. And nationwide, it's not a problem. So enforcement and police resources, I, I don't think that would really be an issue. Um, Another important point, this would ban tobacco on city property, not your private property. That's an important distinction. We aren't telling people what they can do on their own property. That's important to note. But city property, by definition, is taxpayer property. It belongs to the people. That's important to note. So for me, what the people think on this issue has a lot of pull. It's clear to me there's over, overwhelming support for indoor bans. There's probably quite a bit of support for targeted bans. Uh, my sense is that the support for a total ban really starts to drop significantly. It's hard to know. In regards to modeling to children, it's an important discussion. It's a laudable goal. I don't want tobacco use to be something that is acceptable to my daughter. However, modeling to my daughter also involves teaching her about competing values, about the values of liberty and the right of others to chart their own path. It's also about creating teachable moments rather than hiding her from the world. In regards to losing business, I totally reject that argument. I think we know from proof that people are not going to lose business. The pr smoking ban from years ago proves that point. I've given up on the argument against the, uh, that, it's also, that we should also be dealing with alcohol. It's not an either or. We can, we can deal with both. As far as littering, we do have littering laws. Um, it was interesting to discover that there's uh, various bans and uh, various degrees in, in many areas of the country. So this actually isn't new. Now, a complete ban, that's, that's not that common. But tobacco regulations in various forms are very common. Doesn't mean it's a correct path, but to be fair, this is not new ground or a new debate. A lot of citizens have expressed to me that there must be a reasonable way to accommodate those who use tobacco. Segregated smoking areas, for example, many have expressed they, they would like segregated smoking areas outside of the event center, which we have, and that it's a reasonable compromise that protects their health as a non-smoker, but it honors the rights of smoker and gives them some level of compassion and understanding. These people don't like smoking, they don't smoke, but they also understand that people have the right to make their own choices, particularly when their harm to others is negligible or non, non-existent. So we have to think very seriously whether we're willing to strip freedoms away from others in the name of making them healthier. We have to think about the tyranny of the majority, and we have to be very careful in this regard. So we're talking about city property, but what is city property? It's the people's property, and it's there to benefit all people, not just the majority. Tobacco users are citizens, taxpayers, and people too. If the majority of people supporting banning a certain group of people from city property, does that therefore make it right? Of course not. It's there for the enjoyment of everyone, including the minority. Just because a group is a minority, we cannot justify draconian actions to limit their freedom. My job is to express the will of the majority, but at the same time to protect the minority as well. In the end, I have tried to rationalize this six ways from Sunday, trying to convince myself this could work. But my gut, my conscience keeps gnawing at me, telling me something is wrong. I've realized after a lot of soul searching that it's because this is just too far and I can't rationalize away the overreach. I realize what's been bugging me is a gnawing sense that I'm this close to violating a core principle I was taught and our country was founded on. What I can't get past is the following question. Let's say I vote for this, knowing it wasn't just protecting people from harming others, but also telling educated adults who are fully aware of the consequences of their actions that I am overruling their decision and telling them what's best for them in the name of their health, I'm going to dictate to them and overrule their decision. If I vote for this, I know that's what I'm doing. And again, we're not talking about selling tobacco. We're talking about prohibiting its use completely. In one year, if the health department brings a proposal forward to prohibit the consumption of soda on all city property, not just the sale, the consumption, with the argument that obesity is a public health crisis and an epidemic, and we need to model for our children, and we need to protect people from themselves, how can I justify voting no on that when I voted for this on the same grounds? The answer, answer I keep coming back to is I can't. 
I realize I'm going down a very dangerous road with the best of intentions, making people healthier, but still we're on a very dangerous ground. I know the argument that tobacco has no safe level of use and other things can be used in moderation. I get that. That is some logic to me, but the fact is on the same public health logic, soda bans and controls are being implemented, so I can't fool myself into thinking that distinction is a sufficient firewall to more controls. I know many would object to the tobacco versus soda comparisons, but there's a lot of parallels, frankly. Very little benefit from it. Soda bans are already taking hold in our country, so it's not a theoretical argument. I've tried to realize how, rationalize how I could stop here, but I, I just don't see it. As far as saving countless lives, we could argue that with many things. An eye-opener for me is if you can get children to the ages of 18 to 20 without using tobacco, they probably never will. So we really need to focus on addressing that issue. But we also do have to think about the rights of everybody. We also need to be careful about making smokers and tobacco users into pariahs. These are good people with an addiction. There's room for some compassion here. Let's remember we do have some police and firefighters who use tobacco products. Does that reflect on their decency or their value? I don't think so. I acknowledge that those who support this have good hearts and the best of intentions. I honor that. We just have a philosophical disagreement here. So in the end, adults armed with all the information still choose to do things that aren't in their best interest, even dumb things. But one of our core principles from our founding is that you have the freedom to make your own mistakes, to make your own choices, and choose your own path, even if it isn't what I think is the best path. So long as you don't inflict harm on me, abridging your right to self-determination cannot be taken lightly. So in the end, I come back to where I started. I cannot justify dictating to citizens what's best for them and overruling their legal decision when they, in many cases, are not harming anyone else and we have other ways we can address this. And again, with a proposal like this, we're also, we are talking about telling people what is good for them. An adult using chewing tobacco in a car at the event center, there's no plausible argument that they're harming me. So I, ju I just can't do it. Um, I've, I've tried to figure out how I could make it work, but, um, and I'm not a huge fan of the amendment either, but we can build on this. I, I promise you, come back to me, talk about proximities to doors, let's talk about the parks, let's talk about the libraries. There's a lot of things we can build upon, we can add on to this. So that's where I'm at, thank you. Councilor Staley. Um, something that, that's coming up, one word that came to me throughout this whole thing is the word enforcement. Um, the $95 fine is, is problematic for me. And I know that we were, we were talking, uh, Director Frank, and you said if they don't abide, then a police officer will be called. There's going to be a warning first and, and a, a nice maybe approach to a person, and then, and then you're going to come in with the police officer. I, I think our police department is taxed right now with so many important things. I'm not going to be supporting anything that's going to put that on their backs to respond to a call for a, a tobacco user on a park. But I also am, I have to say that the word, another word that came up tonight was the word compromise. The public has to realize that this energy didn't come out of the city council, it came out of the health department. And I think moving forward, this amendment is, is a, a fabulous first step, but I think a lot of these council members are willing to talk with the public to say, what can we come up with that's going to be reasonable? So that we still respect the rights of a smoker, but we keep them, we keep a parameter of, of uh, smoke-free areas that will respect people with health problems as well. But smokers, they're doing a legal activity. I, I use the word criminalized loosely, but in, in a sense, we, we're kind of demonizing smokers. It's almost like we want to run them out of town. And I think, I, I feel for a, a guy who's on the bike trail and wants to have a cigarette, I mean, he's going to have to leave that area and go off into some neighborhood and smoke. I mean, I don't want to put an unreasonable burden on people, but I also, I want our people to be healthy as well. So however this plays out tonight, I think this isn't the end of the conversation, and I think we can come together and, and discuss something that's going to be a win-win for everyone in our community. Council Vice Chair Kelly. Thank you, and first of all, I'd like to thank everybody that showed up tonight to testify on this particular item. Regardless of what side of the issue you're on, I think it's very important 
that we hear from all of you. And again, I sincerely thank you for being here. 85% of our city residents are non-smokers. And the email that I have received on this particular issue certainly reflects that percentage actually it far exceeds the 85%. I've had over well over 100 emails supporting this, and I thank the individuals that sent me those emails. And I've had six or maybe seven emails opposing. Four of those came just today. The evidence, there was comments about heartstrings and emotion. And boy, when you watch Hannah and Dylan up there doing a great job, the future of the city of Sioux Falls, I mean, it does bring up emotion and it does tug on the hearts, heart, heartstrings. However, this is evidence-based. This is based on science uh, and study supports a policy prohibiting tobacco use in terms of how it uh, positively affects that tobacco use. Many other cities have done what we're attempting to, to do today, and they have had great success, and they have realized a reduction in tobacco use within their citizenry. Criminalizing smokers, it doesn't do that any more than receiving a parking ticket does, a speeding ticket, or being fined for having a minor fender bender. So I'm, I just, I do not see that. Uh, I am for protecting the rights of non-smokers from the effects of secondhand and thirdhand smoke. And Dr. Mark Huntington sent us an email earlier that I would like to read a quote from. In a free society, competent individuals arguably have the right to do themselves harm, at least to a point. A free society also mandates that individuals be protected from being harmed by others. The proposed amendments address just this issue. The rights of individual members of the city to use public city-owned facilities, including buildings and parks, without being assaulted by the hazardous byproducts of others' tobacco use. When discussing public health policy, there is often a tension of perceived conflicts between the liberties of different parties. In this case, the potential limitation imposed on the rights of the smoker is less onerous than the potential hazard to which the non-smoking public is otherwise exposed. I would like to once again just review the benefits of this policy. It creates healthy environments by eliminating secondhand smoke. It supports individuals trying to quit or who have already quit tobacco. It reduces your youth exposure, protecting their health and discouraging them from starting tobacco use. It encourages a culture of health and well-being and it protects parks and natural areas from littering of tobacco related waste. I truly believe this vote has the potential to make the biggest and most positive impact on the lives of our citizens when compared to the votes I have cast in the two and a half years while serving on this council. It will benefit smokers and non-smokers alike. It has the potential to save lives and to, to prolong the lives of many others. And I will remind my colleagues that this debate took place at the state level a few years ago when we had the debate about banning smoking in, uh, inside public places. And a lot of the same issues were raised about enforcement issues, criminalizing individuals for smoking indoors, and much of those were never realized. So once again, I would encourage passing of this, and I'd like to conclude by reading something that Mary Michaels had sent to me, and I think it addresses this very well. This may seem difficult, but some of the greatest achievements come from stepping outside our comfort zone and doing the right thing. Usually a fear of taking risks comes from these three things. One, 
overestimating what we think the negative consequences will be. Two, underestimating our ability to address any challenges that do arise. And three, discounting the costs of not acting. I encourage my fellow colleagues to act and vote in favor of this ordinance. Thank you. Councilors, if there's no discussion, uh, any further discussion, let's vote on the amendment. Um, and I'm not trying to, um, I personally didn't understand it. I apologize. Uh, before you vote, Council, do you have a, a, an understanding of what Councilor Erickson is trying to propose? Very good. I'm seeing a nodding of heads uh, of all the councilors, and thank you. Uh, we will vote on the amendment, um, and I, do, we, do, do we need to read it? Read it? Yes, sir. Very good. A roll call vote, please, on the amendment as proposed by Councilor Erickson, seconded by Council Chair Rolfing. Councilmember Neitzert. Yes. Rolfing. Yes. Selberg. Yes. Starr. Yes. Staley. Yes. Erickson. Yes. Erpenbach. No. Kylie. No. Uh, the amendment is passed six to two. Is there any further discussion? A roll call vote, please. Main motion as amended. Council Member Neitzert. Yes. Rolfing. Yes. Selberg. Yes. Starr. Yes. Staley. Yes. Erickson. Yes. Erpenbach. No. Kylie. No. Uh, that is passed six to six to two. Y'all come back now, dear. Uh, security, escort this gentleman out, please. Come on, Soda Pop, let's go. Smoking. <laughs>